November 11th, 1918, and the war to end all wars is over, but not exactly. It would be almost a year before the war would be officially over for every side in a disastrous conflict. Though the most famous, the Treaty of Versailles, wasn't the first nor the last that would be signed demanding peace and punishments. We are going to talk about the five major treaties signed in the wake of the First World War, but we'll be starting with the best known and working our way down. Versailles, the treaty Germany signed with the Entente, compared to the other countries at the end of the war, it was quite tame, thanks to the British wanting a more favorable peace for the Germans. That didn't stop France, however, from putting all its might into trying to make Germany suffer. The treaty took away the following lands from Germany, the Polish Corridor, but not the city of Danzig itself, which functioned as a free city within the new Polish state. The Mornset region was ceded to Belgium, Upper Silesia was given to the new state of Czechoslovakia, German colonies were split between those nearest to France, Britain, Australia, and Japan. The French would occupy the Ruhr Industrial Valley, unofficially, as well as confiscate German coal from the Saar region. The treaty also stated that Germany must pay the equivalent of 5 billion in gold, ships, and other commodities, which after the war, Germany didn't have much of at all. The treaty and armistice would play a great role in the future of German politics, which will be explained in a future video. The Treaty of Brest-Litovsk was signed and official as of March 3rd, 1918, and spelled the end of the war for the Russian people. This is perhaps one of the harsher treaties of the whole war, being quite similar in comparison to the future treaties put upon the Central Powers. The treaty that stated Soviet Russia must rescind all claims on the following states, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, Finland, Belarus, and the Ukraine. The treaty stated nothing of Poland due to the Soviets not controlling it. The Caucasus would also be handed over to the Ottoman Empire. There would also be reparations involved in the peace treaty coming to about 6 billion German marks or around 300 million rubles in 1918 value. The treaty also had an underlying problem. None of it would last more than five months, and later it would be completely reversed with the armistice and a year later with the Treaty of Versailles. Though the treaty wouldn't last, the Soviet Russians were going to use this time of peace to try and spread the revolution to those still at war, which caused some instability, but would ultimately work out only after the end of the Great War. The treaty would lead to the solidification of Soviet rule within the coming years and the rise of such infamous dictators around the world. Almost immediately after the armistice of Murdoz, the Ottomans were split up. The swiftness was due to the empire falling apart, as well as some backroom deals between France and Britain. This secret treaty or meeting was called the Sykes-Picot Agreement, which saw the splitting up and mandation of many areas within the Ottoman control. You can still see the effects of this agreement today, with the mostly straight-line borders for the Middle East and the ongoing conflicts in Iraq, Syria, Jordan, and Palestine or Israel. The modern-day country of Turkey was also destined for this fate, but successfully repelled any attempts of any divisions. No reparations were mentioned in the treaty due to the lack of country to pay them. The newly formed Turks were now being punished for a war they didn't start, but took part in. Sounds like a different event that we'll cover at some time. The Turkish army was limited to 50,000 men, and the Bosphorus Strait would be demilitarized. An attempt to free Kurdistan would be foiled by the Turks as well. The Treaty of Saint Germain was perhaps the harshest of all the treaties of the First World War. The treaty broke up Austria into four countries, Austria, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Yugoslavia, as well as territorial concessions to Poland, Romania, and Italy. The Austro-Hungarians suffered the most territorial losses due to them not really being a state anymore. Due to the dissolution of the country, Austria was put on the political chopping block. The treaty forced the military of Austria to be limited to 50,000 volunteers, as well as the abolishment of conscription. The treaty would also prevent a union between Germany and Austria, which would become important later. Due to the lack of resources from the old empire, the economy of Austria was in such disarray, the state itself was coming into question. The Treaty of Trianon was simply a punitive measure to ensure the subjugation of Hungary. The then newly formed state was formed out of the old Austro-Hungarian Empire. The treaty gave Hungary's neighbors more land, such as the Transylvania region to Romania, and gave up Croatia to Yugoslavia. To decide what country should be formed or returned to the Entente, used a census from 1910. 
which has been, and still is, criticized to this day. The treaty didn't force any reparations on the country, which, considering every other treaty at the time concluded them, though a shell of itself, Hungary had survived the Great War. Now, Lily. Under its terms, Bulgaria was forced to cede lands to Yugoslavia and Greece, thus depriving it of an outlet to the Aegean, involving the transfer of some 300,000 people, and to reduce its army to 20,000 men, and to pay reparations, 75% of which were later remitted. At the end of the Great War, both sides were demolished of industry and funds for their own government. Each side planned a punishing peace for the other due to the horrific and slogging warfare the other had put upon them. A peace that made each side happy would never occur due to the fury each had for each other, but due to political crisis within the central powers' empires, they had no choice but to accept the demands.